in this video we are going to see the introduction of you know to of distillation systems and energy savings energy savings in distillation systems can be done in multiple ways starting from a standalone single distillation column right that is uh, that can be you know served with heat pumping or double effect distillation system or it could be you know done with the help of some operational improvements like changing the pressure locating proper feed uh, you know exchanging the energy between the outgoing products and incoming feed right or maybe if there's a multi-component distillation system you can make better distillation sequences to save energy by you know reduction in the consumption of the uh, reboiler duties or you can you know at the most like you know uh, integrate the distillation column with the process or other columns so there are multiple ways we can save energy in distillation system why it is important to you know save energy in distillation system is because you know uh, if we go to some of the facts associated with distillation systems right we supply heat in distillation column at a higher temperature and we reject heat almost equal amount of heat at a lower temperature so this creates separation work of a mixture so we supply energy in reboiler which is at a higher temperature and we remove energy at condenser which is at a lower temperature and this temperature difference creates the uh, separation work of a mixture which makes the you know energy uh, efficiency of a distillation column a, a poor aspect and hence you know distillation columns though they are very important for process industries are the major culprit of consuming so much amount of heat in process industries when we talk about distillation systems the heat source is available like where the heat is supplied in distillation column is through feed and through hot utility or process or, or uh, steam and heat losses are due to products which are leaving the distillation column and naturally when you sub, uh, supply cold utility uh, at condenser you lose heat so these are the sources and uh, uh, you know sink for the heat in distillation system if you look at some of the data which is almost 15 10 years back you know uh, this is the percentage of percentage share of distillation in industry almost 5% operations in industry are you know uh, governed by distillation system if you look at the energy consumption by distillation column in the industry you can see that 40% energy is being consumed by distillation system and if you look at the overall scenario where you know you you consider everything not only industry consider every piece of the element which consumes energy it could be as simple as fan or it could be mobile charging or it could be anything right overall world energy consumption distillation has its share it may be one person two person maybe little less than that but it is a separate entity which which is you know uh, making very clear that distillation is highly energy intensive process and if we can save some amount of energy in distillation column it will really helpful however this data is very old as already told so before we jump into the energy uh, savings of uh, distillation system let us see what do we uh, let us let us revise what do we understand by multi-component distillation system a binary distillation system is you give a and b uh, and you separate uh, a and b uh, into almost pure products a and b whereas in multi-component system you have more than two species which are to be separated the basic principle remains same like what you, what happens in a multi-component system is you convert uh, a key component concept so there are key components and we separate the or we design the column based on the definition of key component however it is up to the user it is up to the engineer to decide which are the two key components that is the basic difference between multi-component and binary component right so there are a number of differences uh, between um, uh, you know these two so if i want to separate my so the difference would be the number of fraction fractionators suppose if i want to separate a binary system in its pure form i require one column but if there is a tertiary system and i want to separate all the three component in its pure form i require two towers two distillation column in first tower i separate one of the species and in the second tower i separate the remaining two if there are four species in a mixture i require three fractionators so in in general when i have when i have n species my fractionator required would be n minus one 
The second uh, difference is, as I already told you, is key components. So we have got key components here. Uh, I'll explain as we go into the next slide and the relative volatility. Uh, in a binary system, relative volatility is, uh, you know, with respect to the heavy species. Here, it is with respect to heavy key, right? So let us see what is, what are, what do you understand by key components? So in a mixture of A, B, C, D, right, there are, you know, multiple ways you can, or multiple possibilities of the key component. Here in this example, I have specified B as light key and C as heavy key. So what, I, what do we mean by light key and heavy key? So the light key is the one which is going more into the slate and less in the bottoms. And heavy key is the one which goes more in the bottoms and less into the distillate. Anything which is lighter than light key, right, goes completely in the distillate. Anything which is heavier than heavy key goes into the bottoms. Now the option with the designer is, he can say that C and D are my light and heavy key. So if C is light key and D is heavy key, my distillate would be A, B completely in the distillate and portion of C would be uh, like maximum C will be in distillate and remaining C would be in bottom. There will be some part of D also in distillate and majority of the D will go into the bottom. So it is about the designer to decide which will be the key components, right? So key component will become your binary system for the designing. High, heavier than heavy key goes into the bottom, lighter than light key goes into the distillate. Now, <clears throat> when you have more than, you know, two species, you need to sequence the column. Like if I have A, B, C, D, right, and this is the lightest and this is the heaviest. I can have, you know, uh, you know, first column separating A from B, C, D. So I can decide A, B as light key and heavy key. Or I can decide B and C as light key heavy key or I can decide C and D as light key and heavy key. So that will decide the first column. The remaining column again I have say for example I have separated A then I have B, C, D. So from B, C, D also I have option whether I make B, C as light key heavy key or C, D as light key heavy key. So when you have more than two species, right, uh, we can have separate sequences for separating the pure components. So that is known as distillation sequencing. Now when we want to discuss distillation sequencing, there are two things which we need to discuss. One is simple column, other is complex column. Within simple column, we will be discussing about how we can make various uh, separation uh, sequences and then what are the practical constraints when we have say for example some 10-15 sequences in front of us, which are the sequences which are practically acceptable to us, which are practically not acceptable to us. And based on those practical, ex, uh, you know, uh, experiences, there are certain thumb rules, there are, there are certain heuristic rules which are being developed. Uh, heuristics or thumb rules will give you, uh, you know, qualitative idea. Can we make, uh, you know, a yardstick to compare various, you know, sequence? So for that, uh, you know, vapor rate going inside the distillation column can be calculated and compared for various sequences and the sequence for which this vapor flow is least can be considered as a energy efficient sequence, right? And how, why does this vapor flow changes, right? The distribution of key components is a major, you know, contributor to vapor flow. So we'll understand this all four aspects of simple columns. Complex columns are the columns which are having more than two products. So in simple column, we'll have only distillate and bottom. Complex column may have side stream. It may have prefectionator, it may have thermal coupling. However, we will not go into the details of sequencing of complex columns. So, this is a simple column. Simple column will have one feed and uh, it gets into, it splits into two products, distillate and bottoms. And key components are always adjacent in volatility. So, there is no intermediate impurities which we consider in simple column. And you have one reboiler and one condenser. Or and above that, we have got 100% separation is what we assume here, which is not practically possible, but we assume 100% separation. So if, you know, you have A, B, C, D, and if B and C are your uh, key components, B will 100% go to uh, distillate, there is no B in bottom, and C will go only in bottom, and there is no C in distillate. So this is how we define a simple column. Now, when we have two products, we have one sequence. So if talk, we talk about sequence, when there are two products, there is one sequence only. We know A, B. A is lighter component, B is heavier component. So A goes in top, B goes into bottom. You don't have any other option, right? So thermodynamics governs that sequence. So when you have two products, you have only one sequence. 
and you have got three products a b c right so when you have got three products a b c the you know uh, products could be the like sequence could be two as in you have got a b and c so either you can separate a from b c a from top and b c from bottom or the same field can be splitted into you may have a b in top and c bottom so further this b c for for first sequence b c can go to the next column and b and c get separated and a b can go to the other column and a and b get separated so these are the two sequences i am talking so when there are three products you got two sequences when there are four products there are five sequences so a b c d you can separate a from you know b c d right or you can separate d from a b c or you can separate a b from top c d from bottom or you can you know likewise there are five possible sequences which can come into picture when you have four products you just see the number of product increases and the number of possible sequences keeps on increasing right so uh, whenever the number of product increases and we have got you know uh, uh, we need to uh, separate them the sequence will increase with every increase in the product so if there are seven products your number of sequence possible sequence theoretical sequence are 132 if there are eight products the possible sequence goes to 429 right so so uh, you know it is it is very difficult that as the number of product increases the number of sequences uh, you know are very high and hence it's it's very difficult to analyze each and every sequence but then there are certain practical constraints right so how do we check them so i'll come back to like these are the two possible two simple or simplest of the sequence one is direct sequence where we separate the you know lighter component and indirect sequence wherein we separate the heavier component so if there is a b c we separate a first and then b is a direct and when we separate c first and then b is the indirect sequence and you can see that uh, we get the product from bottom here we get this product from the top so direct and indirect sequence are very largely used in fact direct is most preferential when you have no other analysis to do we perform generally the direct sequence so why is that Direct sequence uh, is uh, implemented when you have more lighter component and when both condenser and rebuilder are supplied with the utilities. That means there is no integration between other process. Indirect is used when there is light, uh, uh, light material is less and heavy material is more. Out of all these possible sequences, right, we need to, you know, see that whether any sequence is practically not possible. And to check that, there are certain practical constraints which are implemented which we will see when we meet in the next video. Thank you.